Hello there, it's me, Sophie, with a painting process video of my newest landscape painting. So get cozy, get yourself a cup of tea, open your sketchbook, do some doodles, let's work together. <laughs> This piece was painted using acrylic gouache paint by the brand Holbein. The paintbrushes I used are just miscellaneous brushes that I have picked up over the years. Soft synthetics, nothing too fancy. I think there's a Royal Legnickel brand and a Neef in there. And the piece is painted on a clay board, which is so much fun to paint on. It's so smooth and swooshy and absorbent. Acrylic gouache and clay board are just mwah, perfect together. Now, to be honest, I haven't been feeling the most inspired over the last few days. I've had a really busy weekend. There was actually someone on Instagram using my face and my art and my identity to try to scam other people, which has really put a huge, I don't know, it just hurt my heart, put a huge damper on my weekend. Um, but you know, they've been reported, they're gone now. It's all fine, it's all groovy. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to take myself away by myself and paint. And I feel like all weekend I was waiting for inspiration to strike. And because this stressful thing had happened to me and because that, and because my weekend was really big in general, the inspiration was just like, but not working. So. I ended up just sitting back, having a think, looking at some landscapes. We went for a walk with the dogs. It was really nice. And went back to something that I was familiar with and something that I felt comfortable doing. A cozy, a cozy place, a, a cozy space in my art making place. Um, and lately that has definitely been making these landscapes. And I've been wanting to do three in this series. So perfect chance to do my third one but first I warmed up with a little bit of sketchiness a little bit of playing with color a little bit of speedy painting so I actually did a bunch of tiny really fast studies I gave myself a five minute timer and did five little landscape studies before I did this one just really random photos of landscapes that I had taken over the past week of ne the neighboring fields and forest parts <laughs> and that was a really great way to get me loosened up and then I was like boom into the zone and uh, got started on this painting
So you can see that the background is was pre-painted with this pink and purple and a little bit of blue like swishy swashy background. I like to use this hot pink in my backgrounds because I love the way that they shine through and that they, they kind of glow from within. I talk about this a lot in the last video that I did where I spoke about my process as I painted the piece. I'll put a little card up here so you can have a look at that one if you haven't seen it already. And I think having that pre blobinated background kind of like sparks a little bit of excitement in me as well and uh, forces me to do something about it. <laughs> like to figure out how I can make a really lovely painting on top of on top of a board that has already been scrubbed and painted and blitched and blotched all over. Finding something that can spark your inspiration is really good. For me, it is pre-blobbing or pre-painting a lot of my uh, clay boards that I use, or even in my sketchbook, like using leftover paint from these paintings and just washing some paint over the empty pages in my sketchbook. One, it makes my pages feel less white and scary and stark. Two, it's fun to see what color palettes I can come up with. And three, I just feel like any drawing that you do on top of the painted splodges just looks good already because of the nice colors in the background. I'm still growing as an artist and always will be I hope so finding my way around gouache and also finding my way around how to do landscapes is definitely still a thing for me and working on so many landscapes lately has I feel like ignited a passion for painting really loosely and having a lot of fun with color and shape and flow and rhythm and just being free and enjoying the process doing these landscapes lately have just yeah i don't know it's just been so so lovely just a breath of fresh air really there's always more development to be done in the future though isn't there our styles never stand in one spot for too long or mine doesn't at least i do love exploring new things new mediums new subject matter and yeah, and at the moment I'm just in a landscape phase, a rainbow colourful landscape phase. If you rely on feeling inspired to paint or to get projects done, I feel like you would be sitting there waiting around for a long time. I mean, sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes I just open my sketchbook and I stare at the pages for way too long before I decide to call it a day and close it up, but at least I try. Um, but yeah, for me, I feel like the painting and the blobbing and the scribbling and stuff really, uh, yeah, inspires me, it sparks inspiration somehow. You know, whatever creative work you're involved in, whether that's fiber arts, uh, crochet, quilting, sewing, sculpture work, uh, painting, drawing, whatever you're doing, being inspired feels amazing. But you can't predict inspiration. The thing is that it just comes and goes. So... I was just I was thinking about that and I was thinking how I just need to sit down and do it because it is like a muscle it's like going to the gym it's like working out the more you do the thing 
the more your brain gets into the zone of that easily. Not always, <laughs> not always, but you know, a lot of the time. It's hard when making art is your job, when being a creative is your job, because you can't be, you can't be inspired all the time. A job is a job. There are a boring parts to every job. <laughs> and it's, that's what it's like being a creative as well. Coming up with content, coming up with ideas all the time and pushing those ideas so you don't get bored. I get bored quite easily, so I like to try new things all the time, but sometimes I just, you know, can't be bothered <laughs> thinking of what I want to do next. But I guess I'm saying is um, you just got to do it. You got to try something. You just got to put your pen to the paper and see what happens. Work that muscle, build those muscles. You just need to dedicate time to your craft. You need to dedicate like a lot of time and consistency in your time. Like you got to do it on a regular enough basis that your skills, your ideas, your imagination grows. The more time you spend on developing your skills, building libraries worth of knowledge in your mind, the more intuitive it all becomes and the easier it is to be creative and like hit that creative passion. You rely on inspiration striking less and less as you build your little muscles, as you build that creative muscle of yours. You can even try different creative things during different moods that you're in. I don't know why, but I've discovered that I always make good art when I'm sick. <laughs> it's just something I've discovered over the years in myself. I just really like sitting in bed and drawing or painting. And I feel like I always have a wonderful time, even though I'm sick. <laughs> it's just that's just what my body does. Some, some people make beautiful art when they're mad, when they're angry, when they're passionate. Some people feel most inspired or excited to paint at 2am when, when they can't sleep anymore. Just experiment with different things and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you.
Okay, we're getting close to the end of the video now. I hope you've been enjoying this. I'm sorry that my talking is a little bit all over the place, a little bit, you know, jumps a, jumps a bit all over the place. <laughs> I usually do these videos, I just sit down and just splurge out what I'm thinking. I don't really have rhyme or reason to my thoughts. They just kind of come out as they come out. Um, but yeah, hopefully you got something out of my blethering. So this piece is available as an archival quality print along with the other two in the series. Really proud of this little triptych. They were, I just had such a fun time doing them and I had really wonderful, beautiful reception of them as well over on Instagram, on my posts and my reels. Ah, uh, thank you so much. What, yeah, o overwhelming and so exciting and I'm really glad that we're kind of on the same vibe because I'm going to keep doing what I love doing and I love that you love what I'm doing. Also, the biggest, warmest, scrunchiest, cuddliest, coziest love thank you to my patrons. You are just the dappled light to my luscious grass. <laughs> Whatever that means. I adore you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye.